Hey kids, did you like Evander Holyfield's real deal boxing for the Sega Genesis? You didn't? Well, tough shit, here's another game just like it. Riddick Bow Boxing, released in 1994 for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Yes, from the days of lore when every heavyweight boxing champion of the world had their own video game. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, James Buster Douglas's Knockout Boxing, Evander Holyfield's Real Deal Boxing, George Foreman's KO Boxing, Foreman For Real, Chavez, Mike Tyson Boxing, Foes of Ali, and Hulk Hogan's Main Event. What? Riddick Bow Boxing takes the formula that was established with Holyfield's game on the Sega Genesis and brings it over to the Super Nintendo, which already got what some would consider to be the premier boxing title on the console, Super Punch-Out, and not a Tyson to be found anywhere in sight. But see, the thing is, Super Punch-Out is its own little beast, a game that's more about learning the timing, the patterns, and figuring out the best means of countering or attacking your opponents. Riddick Bow Boxing is straightforward traditional boxing. 12 rounds of straight up hurting bombs, a traditional boxing scoring system in place. No gimmicks, no patterns, no goofy moves, no vodka. Just pure fisticuffs and reflexes as you take your own rookie up the ranks through numerous made up boxers on your way to face off against the reigning and defending heavyweight champion of the world, Riddick Bow, back when he was a boxing champion and not a kickboxing jobber. Nobody's getting that. So you could either embark on a career of championship glory or you could just play a quick exhibition match against a computer or a second player. There are 25 boxers to choose from. Riddick Bow and 24 other jabronis who don't matter. When you decide to embark on a new career, you will get to create your own boxing legend that will effectively retire one of the lower tier guys. Not that it matters because the lower tier guys generally suck ass. The career mode essentially shapes your roster of available boxers, as some will be introduced to the ranks while others would be retired over time. Eventually, even your own created fighter will grow old, weary, and eventually retire after about 40 fights or so, regardless of whether you challenge for the title or not. There is that sense of realism in this regard. You start off a new career, you grow your skill sets, and your career either soars or just languishes. Eventually, you'll grow old, you'll get some gray hairs, you lose a little of your prime, and eventually you'll have to hang it up. Of course, losing a few fights in a row will also net you early retirement, at which point you're either forgotten, you turn to a life of drugs and prostitution, or you end up getting inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, because shit, if Drew Carey can make it, so can you. So here's the game. Player 1 on the left, player 2 on the right. This never changes, so get used to it. You got four face buttons for left and right jabs and hooks, respectively, and the trigger buttons are used to move around the ring. Well, using the D-pad to move back and forth and the triggers repositions your boxer in the ring as displayed in this little thing that you'll rarely pay attention to because, well, this part is more important. The part where you're getting hit in the fist with the other guy's face. And let me tell you something, this part where you're getting hit in the fist with the other guy's face works surprisingly well. I'll admit to being apprehensive to this style of boxing game, but Riddick Bow Boxing is actually a pretty functional and pretty enjoyable little game. It's straightforward, it's easy to pick up and play, the combat is slick and smooth without being too overly complicated, and the mechanics of it make sense. Repeated blows to the head or body will weaken those areas and subsequently becoming exploitable points to inflict some heavy pain. And while the combat might come across as a bit simplistic because all the boxers more or less play the same way, there's no special punches or attacks unique to any boxers, they all have differing stats in terms of speed, stamina, and power, and the higher ranked contenders will certainly box a smarter fight than the lower tier folks, whether you're playing in the career mode or straight up exhibition match. So there is that progression in difficulty and challenge as you move up the ranks. Control in general is pretty solid, relatively responsive, and works well enough that you shouldn't have too much of a problem jumping into the game and getting the hang of it. Riddick Bow Boxing is pretty smooth and pretty clean visually, a bit too clean. Where are all the blood and bruises? Why can't I bite people's ears off? Uh, wait, this is Nintendo, they don't allow that sort of thing here. Also, biting ears off is the other guy's shtick, so... But still, this is a 
good looking game for the most part. The ring rotates nicely and smoothly without much roughness. The boxers are large and detailed, even if their heads are somewhat cartoonish. Which is funny because that Holyfield game had realistic looking heads. But this game has heads that look to have been rejected from Punch-Out or something. It looks silly, which contrasts against the core gameplay which is not quite on par in silliness. Also, there are a lot of recycled heads there with the built-in fighters. I understand that this is a necessary sin with your created boxers, you only have like a set number of head templates. But with the built-in folks? Well, setting that piece of business aside, the game does run at a fairly decent pace and never truly stutters. The heads-up display looks a little nicer here than on the Holyfield game. If only they included names so I'd know who I'm fighting, because otherwise I'd have to make up my own name for these boxers. I, I don't think I'm doing a good job of making Roman look strong. Right now, Kofi Kingston isn't really doing that hot. <laughs> Riddick Bow Boxing has fairly above average sound. A collection of less than exciting musical tunes grace the various intermissions and menu screens that you'll fumble with, and by fumble I mean scroll up and down or something. The in-game portion has some echoey sounding cheers and jeers from the audience, the grunts are decent, the taunts are a bit muffled but actually comprehensible, and the various impacts of glove to flesh are pretty brutal sounding. And I mean that in a good way for once. Not the usual, this hurts my ears, f*** the pain away kind of brutal sounding. It sounds alright. Overall, Riddick Boat Boxing is essentially the Super Nintendo equivalent of Sega Genesis boxing titles such as Evander Holyfield's Real Deal Boxing and Greatest Heavyweights. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because those are good games and this is a rather decent remake or mimicry of those titles. It's simple and straightforward, it runs pretty slick, and it makes for a fun little two-player game where you can create your own boxing jabronis and beat the piss out of each other. I almost wish the graphics adopted a more serious style as opposed to the over-exaggerated style seen here, but it doesn't really detract from the gameplay. It's a fairly common game to come across, it's relatively cheap, and for someone who wants a nice little boxing title without the extra frills or Ballyhoo, Riddick Bow Boxing fills that need more than nicely. All in all, some very sweet science here.